Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Deskside Chats podcast presented by the City of Northport. My name is Madison Hyde, and I'm the Deputy Communications Manager for the City. Everyone has a story, right? In this podcast, I'll be learning the stories of our employees right here in the City of Northport. Join me as I chat with folks from all walks of life across departments and divisions. We're building a community of unity. Get to know the staff working for you every day. Now let's lean in and chat desk side. This week, we're chatting with Don Shorter. Don is passionate about mental health, well-being, and wellness as a whole. Join our chat as we discuss employee well-being, her upbringing, and how much she loves Florida. Enjoy! Hello, Don. Hello, Madison. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I am doing well. So let's get right into your origin story. So I know you come from where I come from in the great north. Yes. So tell me about growing up in Michigan. Well, I was born in Battle Creek, Michigan, home of Tony the Tiger. Um, it's a sad little hole in the wall <laughs> in Michigan. <laughs> <Hole>. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Cereal bowl. Yes. <laughs> um, my dad was a police officer. He started as a beat cop in the early 70s. And um, he ended up being a single parent to both my brother and I for several years after our mother had left. Okay. Um, and I grew up always wanting to work for the city of Battle Creek because um, that's where my dad worked, and so it was part of the city family. Sure. Um, he met and married the woman that I call mom, mm-hmm. who also worked for the city, and then I, too, ended up working for the city of Battle Creek <laughs> um, until I came here seven years ago. I'm All about right. to have my rebirth day next week. Your rebirth My day. rebirth day. I'll be oh, seven years that. old. <gasps> That's awesome. I love that you call it that. I That's do. such a great thing. So so now I'm sorry. I'm going to jump back before the, re- the rebirth. Okay. What were you doing at Battle Creek, at the City of Battle Creek? Um, City of Battle Creek, I spent five years in economic development in the international um, office where we brought foreign businesses in. Um, because of the location of Battle Creek, it's mm-hmm. off of I-94, which is smack dab in the middle of um, Detroit, in Chicago. Sure. It's a very large industrial park, tier one automotive supplier. So we would bring um, foreign companies in from Japan, um, Sweden. Wow. Uh, Duncan Aviation has um, their cabinet making um, headquarters there at okay. the, the airport. So yeah. a lot of industrial, international. Um, then I was in the clerk's office. For 12 years. Wow. Um, and that also got combi- combined at some point in time. Somebody thought it was a really good idea to throw code compliance and building inspections into the clerk's office. Oh, uh-huh. That makes sense. So that was seven of the 12 years was a blended combination of code compliance, building inspections, and okay. clerk. Yes. Wow. Interesting. Very Mixed interesting. Things, but st- but gave you a lot of background yes. and a lot of random different things, which I'm sure helped too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So then, okay. So then you had your rebirth, which your rebirth day is you moving here. Yes. I actually um, bought a one-way plane ticket and came down for a job interview. I packed two suitcases. One full of work clothes and one full of vacation clothes because (laughs) I figured if I got the job, I would try it out. And if I didn't like it, I would go back from my vacation. Sure. And no harm, no foul. Right. (laughs) And I'd have, if I didn't like it, then if I didn't get the job, I had vacation clothes. So I was, you know, staying for for two weeks either way. And I um, ended up never going back. I came down with a one way plane ticket and two suitcases seven years ago. Ago, oh, wow. I didn't have a car. I didn't have anything. I had a friend who had worked for Kellogg's yeah. up in Michigan, mm-hmm. and she uh, retired down here. So um, I would come and visit her, stay with her when I would come down here. And whenever she'd return home to Michigan, she would stay at my house. And okay. so 
I roommated with her until I figured nice. the rest of it out. Right. So, and yeah. you And this is an area you'd, you'd wanted to come to for yes. a while. Yes. I actually um, came down here when I was nine years old. My dad, um, being a police officer, was also a competitive shooter. Okay. And he was a very, very good shooter, actually. And uh, he um, qualified one year for the... Um, multiple years, but the one that sticks out in my mind, um, which changed my entire life, was when I was nine years old, he qualified for the governor's top 20. So that took place in Mississippi that year. Okay. So we traveled down to Mississippi for the um, competition. Mm Mm-hmm. I spent most of my life growing up on a pistol range. Okay. Um, <laughs> using Fun. random empty shell casings as whistles. Oh. Um, yeah, that's... <laughs> Fun. <laughs> um, so after that, we um, extended the trip down to Fort Myers where his aunt and uncle lived. And it was the first time I had ever been to Florida. And probably one of the first times I'd ever been out of Michigan Sure. Except for going to see my granny in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So um, we went down to the Ford and Anderson Museum um, there on McGregor Boulevard, and I just remember those, the palm trees lining the sidewalks. Right. I was nine years old. I could probably tell you what I was wearing that day, Um, and it just changed my whole spirit. I was, felt such, I didn't know at the time what it was. Right. But I knew that this is where I wanted to be. Holy cow. Eventually. And then you just kind of, and so, on a whim, came here. I did, but my whole life had been kind of strategically planned right. around that. sure. So I had planned on moving down after high school. Mm-hmm. Um, actually had my yearbook signed, lots of friends signed, good luck in Florida. Oh, really? We'll miss you. And I stayed for a boy. And so I um, have two wonderful children. So that's the Lovely. great part of yes. that. Uh-huh. Um, but once I had the kids, I you know I had to put the Florida thing on hold because right. my whole family is there. Sure. Um, the woman that I call mom is one of thirteen siblings. Wow. I have fifty-two first cousins, <gasps> and what? it's a Hispanic family, and family doesn't leave. <laughs> oh my god! So I, have I could three, not. Like, first cousins. <laughs> So I couldn't imagine ever taking my children away from family, Mm -hmm. so it wasn't an option. So I just changed my plan and actually calculated out when my youngest would graduate high school, and I gave two years after that so that he could, you know, kind of figure what he was doing out. Right. So, and I called it my sunset date, and it was July 1st of 2013 was the beginning of my sunset, which is where I would start actively looking for something down here in Florida. Right. And I actually came down and interviewed with the city of Northport, I want to say in 2014 or 15, down in um, NDS in the planning department. Oh, Um, Did not get the job, Mm -hmm. clearly, Mm -hmm. but, and that's (laughs) okay. (laughs) Um, But it was very bizarre because I'd never heard of Northport, Florida. I knew it was kind of in the general area. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I left after that interview and I got in the parking lot and I could take you right out to the spot that I was parked in, I just had this overwhelming sense of home. And I knew this is where I belong. That's and great. I was like, I will That's stalk awesome. these people yeah. until they give You're me a job. Be, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so I applied for everything and anything. And I'm like, I will wear them down until they give me a job. Right. Um, it's not the job <laughs> I came down here for, though. So sure. I was down here about a year and a half before... I, before they came to their senses and, and gave me a job. And they realized what they were missing out <laughs> exactly. on. Exactly. Yeah, oh my gosh. So you, so you started out in HR, right? In human yes. resources? Yes. And you were kind of like the front desk Yes, person, I was or? hired as an administrative services specialist. Okay. And in the interview, um, I was told it was new to the department. They Mm -hmm. hadn't had that position in there before, and they weren't really sure what it was going to look like. Right. Um, They liked my wellness background because I've been a licensed um, personal trainer for, I don't know, 15 or 16 years. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, But my public records background, um, because that's mainly what I did um, in – Michigan is I did all the public records for the entire city, including police, fire, all of them. I was the public records person. Okay. So I reviewed all, 
all public records uh-huh. before they went out. I was the yeah. only person who was allowed to redact anything. So <laughs> it was a lot. kept you busy. It was a lot of work. Yeah. We got a little over 3,000 requests a year. Um, but in addition to that, we also ran all of the elections. We did all the city licenses. And while wow. co-compliance and... Um, inspections were yeah. there. I also placed the liens on the properties. It's like, so I don't even know. Random. It's yeah, it's bizarre. Yeah. So issued and building permits yeah. <laughs> like, while doing public records. No, exactly. Bizarre. Yeah. So then, so now in your current role, you focus a lot on the wellness side of things. Yes. Yeah, so I was health. in the administrative uh, services or specialist position for about a year and a half when. Um, they had created the safety and wellness coordinator position. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I applied for it and I interviewed for it and I yeah. got the job. <laughs> so, um, and again, it was a brand new position. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one for that coordinator, you know, to specifically um, focus on safety and wellness. Right. And so um, we just, you know, built built it off of that i had been on the wellness committee prior to that okay Mm -hmm. um where we had already started doing our fit friends classes because we had just celebrated five years this last june of fit friend classes wow awesome um so we had already started that started the points program just started slowly building right um you know what has now become our award-winning um, sustainable yeah, wellness amazing. program. You've done so, an amazing job. Well, it's been teamwork. Yes. We have a committee. Yes. Yep, teamwork makes the dream work. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, so um, so it's just been great. It's just been awesome. I love serving our employees. I love that. It's and my that's, favorite thing to do. Well, that's good, because that's, that's exactly what that job is for. Yes, right? exactly. <laughs> so it's been great. So that works out nicely. Yes. So, so what are some of the highlights that you've done here um, at the city? like wellness wise, what are some of the things that stand out that you've accomplished or put on or, you know, things like that? Well, um, one of, one of the the best things I love doing the fun fact Friday, which has become um, something that people look for and Don shorter emails, (laughs) the full disclosures. I don't even work on Fridays. (laughs) (laughs) I don't, but I do get up on Friday and I research the best fun fact that I can find so that we don't go without fun facts. Yeah. Um, uh, but so I like, I like, I want to get the feedback because my, my whole mission in life is to make a difference and to have a positive impact on people. And Mm -hmm. so when I get those emails that said, hey, you know, I was having a really bad day until I read your fun fact, and um, just those little things that, you know, that it's making a difference for people. For sure. Um, We have one employee that shares the fun facts with their um, elderly father who struggles with um, medical issues and depression. So, sure. so it's just, wow, it's, so it's, it's reaching just, beyond yes, employees. Exactly. And yeah. so, um, we just wrote, we just approved our strategic plan for wellness specifically. Okay. And that is actually, um, the mission, uh, the vision statement in the strategic plan for the wellness program is to reach beyond work walls, to reach out into our community, to make an right. impact because we are, a force that is growing here as city employees and we have the ability to infiltrate through our community into our schools into the homes and make a difference Mm -hmm. not just here at work but in our community exactly Mm -hmm. and it's showing it's starting to get out there like we did that uh you are not alone event and different things like that where we're trying to help move along that initiative yes and then i think one of the the most exciting things for me in the last I think four years actually it's very weird because my rebirth day is next week but I also started my new job on the very day of my rebirth day what yes it's so well that's meant to be it is yes yeah, so tell, tell me about your new role so the no the new role of wellness oh, I that, started I see. it on my rebirth day oh I got oh my gosh, yes. I'm so sorry. Okay, so I have I my gotcha. rebirth day of yes, four yes, yes. years, okay. and then I will have been in this position for four years, oh, but I'm cool. also transitioning into a new position where I will be leaving um, HR and going out to public works to be their training and accreditation officer. 
That's pretty, so. I mean, that feels like that's a great job that kind of blends all of your different type of past things into one yes. role. Yes, and it was a hard decision because yeah. um, I love everything I'm doing. There's some things that I have to leave behind, like right. the Fit Friends group, um, which is I'm super sad. sad. That, I'm sad about that, yeah. <laughs> I'm sad about it, too. Um, but it's it's just like a next level to sure. next opportunity for, you know, some growth, not yep. just for me personally, but hopefully to have a growing impact on the city as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. especially in public works, there's so many guys and gals that are out, you know, out on, in the field working that and maybe missed, don't get as much it, exactly. attention because they don't have, they're not having to check their email every two seconds exactly. like we do. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And they don't check their email. <laughs> right. That's why you have to, have to always ask, please myself forward, and I get please a forward. blank look. Yeah. Don Shorter, what? Who? Yeah. And everybody else who checks emails go, oh, Don Shorter, yeah. the email with the emails. That's <laughs> exactly. basically Exactly, her. It's, it's the stalker. Awesome. The email stalker. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Unsubscribe. Well, we're so glad to have you here. And we're so glad, you know, in this new position, you're going to make a big difference as well, I'm sure. I hope so. So now we're going to transition away from work. I know that you, okay, we're talking about some things that you enjoy outside of work. And I happen to know that you are a big, big, big Michigan fan. I'm a huge Michigan like, fan. Like, really, really. Yes. Like, if you it. took a moment right now, if you're listening, and you look down at your veins you will see that the blood is blue before it is tainted by any outside elements. That's then right. it changes color, colors. So we, we our blood is blue. It's true. It's meant to be. Oh, my God. Well, I can't say as a Packer fan or even a Wisconsin fan. Well, I guess red. It's tainted. But it's tainted. Uh -huh. okay, well. Like the Buckeyes. But that's okay. Oh, I do have several Buckeye fired. friends. <laughs> So when was the last time you were at a Michigan game? Oh my gosh, it's been years. Oh. I used to go to all of the games. I have not stepped foot in the big house in a very long time. My children used to go meet the players every oh, year. So They'd have fun. lunch with them before the season started. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's just I love the big house. It's probably been fifteen years wow. or better. Time flies as you get older. You think, I'm like, oh, that was like five years ago. And you're like, wait a second. Let me think about the timeline here. And you're like, right. oh, that was really 25 years ago. It's <laughs> crazy. I know. Yeah. I have those moments as well. Yeah. 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 It's nuts. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Okay, so then football watching. Then we have gardening. And you have a lot to do with our employee garden. I do. I am a failure at gardening, but I do my best. Okay. Um, so that's yeah. what matters. It's a it's a interest that I have but I absolutely it makes my soul hurt that I kill a lot of living things uh -huh. Uh -huh. um trial by error right but there's something that I've dies at the end of mm -hmm. it so um I feel like it's better to do that with um plants maybe sure than any I guess other the like things, a breathing so. <laughs> thing correct that's good I did uh, manage to raise two children so I, mean, I did a decent job there so you can do it at least twice I'll try a garden yeah. so um our employee garden at the um, Mullen Center, it's just been so hard to garden year-round because right. of the heat, because the no matter how often I speak to the squirrels and the bunnies yes. and remind them that it is not a buffet. Hey, quit it. Uh -huh, yeah. that, <laughs> and we do plant flowers yeah. for them to snack on oh, and that's things good. for them. Distractions. Um, and remind them it's not a buffet. Right. Leave our stuff alone. Um, yeah. They don't listen. Mm -hmm. mm. And the raccoons, they... Uh, you know, come out and they snag a tomato and stuff. So, especially in the summertime. Um, so we are actually, um, we've purchased through the wellness funds, um, hydroponic tower gardens oh, cool. for the facilities. Mm -hmm. um, Public Works has theirs. Utilities has already started growing. The fire department just got their set up, and I'll be at PD tomorrow setting up their hydroponic oh, awesome. tower. Awesome. Okay. Then, and they're indoors, so they've got the lighting systems. You can grow everything mm -hmm. right within the tower, and it holds 36 different um, herbs and vegetables. Wow. And so I'm kind of excited. Like, I'm yeah. not the expertise, but I just love watching people who know what they're doing right. um, make these things successful. Sure. So, like one of them, or one of my previous interviews, Elizabeth Wong. She's a part of it, right? She is. Yeah. And actually, Elizabeth um, has done a Lunch and Learn out at the Employee Garden mm -hmm. um, and talked about the um, drip irrigation system that is installed in the Employee Garden over at right. the Mullen Center, and it's on a timer. Um, the neat thing about the garden is it's been... Um, 
it's been made out of um, recycled materials. Oh, so cool. the garden beds that are over there were made out of um, leftover uh, park curbing from Parks and Rec. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh huh. I didn't the, know um, that. Okay. There's the old um, solid waste blue recycle bins over there. Yes, yes, that, I saw those. Those are the experimental bins, or if it's a like the mint. We planted mint. We I planted mint one t- the first season. Yes. In one of the flower beds on the ground, not knowing that mint literally will take over the world. Oh no! Um, and so we've pretty much been pulling mint out of the ground since then <laughs> so you have um, plenty of mint We're there's doing plenty well of on mint, mint for okay. mojitos or you know whatever I mean, so um so mm-hmm. we've now started growing those type of items in the blue bin so that they stay in the bin and they don't take over the world right so um we do have a banana tree over there and a lime tree and an orange tree um they seem to be doing pretty good um the the herbs do great over there. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of fresh herbs. There's a beautiful, um, very large um, lemongrass plant over there. Oh, wow. And the thing about the employee garden is it doesn't have to just stay there. If you wanted to, you know, clip part of the grass off, I took a little piece home, yeah. planted it at my own house. So that's what the garden is for, for the employees to take they don't have to have permission there's a locker in the back that's got clipping shears it's got gloves it's got all the garden tools it's got seeds if you decide you want to plant something so it's just kind of something that you know if you don't really know much about gardening yeah this is your opportunity and it's free because it's paid for through the wellness funds so you don't have to spend your own hard-earned money right trying to figure out if you're a farmer or not I think I would find out that I am not. I am not either. But yeah, I borrowed um, I borrowed herbs from there before, I and they're, they're just so, so nice to oh mix into gosh. salads and stuff. They're so fresh, and yeah. I never knew that lettuce could actually have a flavor, right? Like have taste. Yeah, and I just the feel like lettuce the from there is just yeah, it's just mm-hmm. I was like, wow, it's, it's amazing. Right. Yeah. Definitely. So it's great. I love yeah. it. I love that you're keeping that up too. I mean, it's I, and I don't think a lot of our employees really know that it's there. So no. hopefully this remind some folks yes i'm hoping that the 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 tower gardens are just kind of a segue right into the employee garden Mm -hmm. so when the weather's nice there are benches over there um Mm -hmm. and it is one sense short of being a garden of the five senses but we did get approval from etna um to purchase a water feature for okay. the sound. Oh, yes. Yep. So um, then it will be another mini. Yes, it will be a mini. Yes, there's flowers over there. The butterflies love the flowers over mm-hmm. there. Um, so it's just a peaceful little place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I might have to walk over there and check yeah. it out again soon. Yeah. So now my wrap-up questions. I happen to know you gave me a preview that you're like some of my previous people where yeah. you just you do not watch TV. I don't watch a lot of TV. I watch more TV now that I live alone with my cat <laughs> because There's more time yes, yes. Mm-hmm. um so because my children are grown and they live in two different states right so um i do like to watch anything that involves um serial killers um <laughs> i watch a lot Same. of id tv <laughs> yeah, evil lives here so Ooh. usually yeah it's one of my favorites i like the first 48 um, but that's on a and that's yep and yeah. i i do watch so if mm-hmm. i do have my tv on off football season yes um, right. it's it's on id okay. or dateline true, true like crime. it's true crime is i have it's no pretty, idea but i'm obsessed funny? with it isn't it funny that we, we watch these things to relax and yes can just, and can just go to sleep after i fall asleep watching forensic files it's, full disclosure it's it's soothing it's alarm i fall asleep watching <laughs> northwood's law sometimes it's on animal planet i think uh-huh. but like how could i be it's bizarre. I don't yes. know how we do we do that, but okay, it makes so, me so question then, myself. Me too. Mm-hmm. Often, <laughs> favorite movie. Favorite movie. Um, I don't know. There are some. It depends on the value of it. So, there are some like for entertainment value. Yes. If I just want to watch a movie, I like Sweet Home Alabama. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. It's just I have it's no idea. Relaxing, about it. Yeah, it's and I can Reese watch it. Boom. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's kind of like a your comfort movie yeah. a little bit. Like yeah, you want it's, I always on find myself background. watching it. Yeah, I have no idea why. When it's on, it's on all okay. the time. Right. So. Oh, just on like different channels. On. Yeah, seems to be a repetitive. Yeah. Maybe like, it's a lot oh, of pe- people's. Let me watch show. this. Like right. I've never seen it before. Yeah. 
And it's like your hundredth time watching it. <laughs> exactly. My dad does that too. Yeah. Okay, so then final question. Ice cream flavor. I am not <gasps> a fan of I ice cream. Known. I should have known. I am I should have known. If I am going to eat ice cream, it has to be a single scoop of chocolate chip on a cone because I don't do melted ice cream. It uh, reminds me of milk and I think milk is disgusting. That makes sense. It basically is milk, isn't uh-huh. it? Pretty yeah. much. Pretty much made out of. That'll do it. <laughs> yeah. So you you have to eat it real quick then, yes. I'm guessing. Yes. yes. <laughs> so if it's in a cup, it starts to melt quickly. It does. It does. Because the cup's temperature mm-hmm. starts melting it. So. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. True stories. That's. I hope they're all true stories. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, I think we made it to the end here. I really appreci- appreciate you coming on here, Don. I Thank appreciate you for you, joining Madison. me. And we will be back again next week for another Deskside Chat. See you later.